Okay. How was it during the depression? Was it? Uh, did you did you feel it very much? Oh yeah, over here. But I've been I've been fortunate. I'm, I I work for the same man I work for now. Oh. Yeah, I, I got Mr. Shoemate. Shoemate, yeah. I used yeah. to be a chauffeur. And then after I got to be his uh, chauffeur, his right hand man, and, uh, and I used to handle all those properties. They have a lot of property in San Francisco. Yeah. They managed the properties. He had a big ranch out at Los Altos, and I used to drive back and forth. And so. Uh, he just kept me, and they, he died, and the wife died, and the other one son died, and the other son is still living. And yeah. They still keep me there. Oh, that you know, is. I'm, I'm still there. I don't do much, but but I I know all I know all the ins and outs. So that's he keeps me and he likes me. Yeah. Nice, never tells me to do anything. Never bosses me. Give me all the money I want. Pay me real well. I got no kick on that. And don't ask me no questions. I want you to do this, I want you to do that. He said, can you do it or will you do it when you get a chance? Do this or do that. It's and his daughter was the same way. His daughter, was, she was lovely to me. Her name was Virginia. I've got a picture and I'll show it to you before you leave. All right. And she was, uh, she was wonderful. They had the drugstore right over... Uh, well, that's a Southern Divisadero. Southern Divisadero. Yeah, 31, 31 stores. Yes, 31. 31 stores, 31 drugstores. I drug didn't stores. know that. So they said, she just kept it for, for sentimental reasons. Oh. So they still retain that. I, I didn't know they had that many. 31 stores. When I'm with me, I had 16, 13. Oh, they've done well. And I. I and you've been with them all these years? Since 1922. Isn't that. Well, that certainly speaks well for you. I, 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 I quit him three or four times, just for no reason at all, but he always made me come back. He sends um. wife up to my house to get me. Yeah. <laughs> but he was nice. I was nice to him. He, but he was good to me. He brought my son Jimmy in the world. Yeah. Uh, St. Francis Hospital. The wife had the best rooms, just like a hotel. Didn't charge me a nickel. He, he the, did this for you. I went to the world and paid all the expenses and everything. How and wonderful! You don't whole, see people like that. Oh no, you know. But then he gave me the ops of hiring a lot of colored. I've had all oh, hundreds of colored boys. I put to work. Yeah. You know, porters and drugstores, which was a pretty good job. It wasn't much, but it would. During the depression, it was, uh, yes, so it was a, a job. Yeah. Sure. Twenty dollars a week—that was pretty fair then. Yeah, she's better than yeah. nothing. And uh, I put all all the boys in. You just tell me to get somebody for this store, that store, this store, that store. And I had a list about that long. Oh, I'd nice. Pick them out. Yeah. I could yeah. judge about yeah. how good they were. So we placed that reliance on. Oh my! I'd write a history about him. Him and I. He was a great politician. And I didn't know that. Hmm? I didn't know that. He uh, the best time was under the retirement of Jim Rolfe. Remember James Rolfe? Jim, he was a, a mayor. He was a mayor. Mayor, yes. Yeah, he, he used to dictate to Rolfe, tell Rolfe what to do. Uh -huh. He had another man by the name of uh, this man that he was an attorney. But they they run the city, tell give Rolfe orders what they wanted done in yeah. politics, uh -huh. you know. Oh. So I uh, I was in with all that. Heard all that, been around him, heard the conversations and heard how crooked politicians, politicians could be, but the public doesn't know that. But Rob was a great man. I shouldn't, uh, I shouldn't talk ill about him, which I won't, because that's. Was he Democrat or Republic? I can't. Well, I think he, he was a Democrat. Democrat. I think I Jim Rob was a Democrat. I believe. Uh, I wasn't sure. I recollect real well that uh, Jimmy was a uh, my son. He was about uh, five years old, just began to walk fair. So Shoemate told me this, is, uh, you take Jimmy, my son, call him, my, my son's name is Jimmy. Yes, uh -huh. you your son and your son-in-law. Yeah. He says, there's a bottle of champagne, uh, there's a case of champagne in the basement, put it in the Cadillac, and you go up and get Jimmy, and take Jimmy over to Mayor Ross and, and deliver this uh, case of champagne. I take Jimmy with you. I said, all right. He said, uh, so the mayor gets in about one o'clock. If he's out there, you wait there until he comes. If he had to stay there at six o'clock, wait till he comes. Um. So I took him over and uh, I just drove up there and it was in about ten minutes. And here he comes with the chauffeur and the job. Got out. Oh, what are you doing here? I said, uh, Mayor Ron, I says, uh, Dr. Shumate sent you over a case of champagne. He said, Indeed. Gee, that's fine. He said, You might bring it in. And so I put it in. Yeah. He said, Who's that little fellow here? I said, That's my son. He said, What? 
I said, that's my son. I said, I named it after you. Oh. Your Honor. His name is James. And I named it, named it after you. He said, did you do so? He grabbed him and took him to the house. <laughs> he took a $10 bill, and $10, $10 gold piece in his hand. He said, oh. now this is, this is for you, Jimmy. Now hold it tight. Don't let your daddy get it. <laughs> so he just squeezed it tight, you know. So Mrs. Yeah. Rolfe took him in and she kind of cuddled him. And he's a pretty, pretty nice little kid. So I brought him out. and So, so the doctor says, uh, did you see the mayor? I said, yeah. Did you see Jimmy? I said, yeah. What do you think of it? He thought he was fine. And so I gave him a piece of change. And Jimmy still had it in the hand. <laughs> so he's so holding on to it. He's opening his hand. They opened it there was that $10 gold piece. Uh, it was money with a $10 gold piece. Yes. Uh, that's, that's worth quite a bit now, I believe. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, I had a lot of experience with those people. I had a lot of run-ins. and. Yeah, I can imagine over a period of time like yeah, that. Yeah, cops, you know, would get me and want me to do uh, papers while I'm on the street. I said, I'm not going to give you a tag. He said, well, give it to me. I'll, I'll take it. It's Paul and, Paul and Sutter. You know, with the cars coming out that hill, Paul and Sutter. Yeah. And drugstore right in the corner. It was door number seven. Oh, yes. And so mm -hmm. she made, we stopped there. I said, Dr. Gans, I'll be between four and six. You stay right here. I said, Can you see the cop there? You stay right here until I come out. I said, I said all right. So there's a couple there. Name is, his name is Levy, That's Jewish yes. man. He's, he's taking cars, he's taking a car across the street. Oh, he couldn't write fast enough. Look over at me because I was by the, where I shouldn't be. Oh, he was writing yeah. his tag out. Uh -huh. Red says, you. So I said, let's see your license. I said, I haven't got any. <laughs> uh huh. You drive without a license? You wrote that down. And so he says, uh, don't you know it's against the law to stop here? I said, I ought to take you down. Take you right out of this car and take you down. Well, I said, shoot yourself, officer. He says, uh, how long have you been driving? Why oh, I said, I've been driving about six years. You mean driving six years and you know, don't know any better than to stop here? I said, I'm going to stay here until I'm told to move. But well, I'm telling you to move and move right now. And he started <laughs> to get in. I says, uh, no, just a minute, officer. I said, here comes the boss now. She was a police commissioner then. Oh, he was he's a police commissioner. A police commissioner <laughs> see? So I said, here comes the boss now. You tell him. And she may come out and he says, uh, Commissioner? <laughs> he said, give me that tag. I'll give you nothing. I said, why don't you ask me? He said, he couldn't use that. Give me that tag. Oh, no. Oh, I'll keep the tag. And so uh, I got in the car. Gee, this guy was, his face was red old Levy, you know. And he didn't know what to do. He stood and stammered. He's right in the middle of the street. He didn't know where he was. And the streetcar conductor, they used to collect the fares. You know, you get on the front, and, he, and stand, he's on the ground. He collect the fares, and he'd, he'd go on the front during the yeah. rush hours. So you go in front of the oh. car. He was on the, and he was, he was like, oh, he's tickled to death. He was tickled to death because I was getting a tag. Oh, he was, oh, he was lighting. <laughs> oh, he was, his head was sticking out. So the next day I went down there and I said, hey, listen here. I won't, say, I won't say the words I used. I said, but I should have done out of it. Give you a good beating. I said, you're not too late for it now. I said, I'll get out and I'll whip you. I, I told him <laughs> what I should have done to him. He said, I, I, I said, never mind. I said, I'll do it right now. I said, I'll, I'll, I'll make you lose your job. And so he he took low. I said, you thought it was funny. You thought I was going to get arrested. You went for leaving to take me down, wasn't you? So I seen you out there. I said, you thought he was going to take me down. He said, yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, so when I, we drove up, I said, here's a tag you give me. So I tore it up, threw it out. Well, he said he was doing his duty, but I, you told me to stay here, didn't you? I talked to, him, talked to him just like talking to anybody else, doctor. I said, yeah. you told me to stay here, and I stayed there, because you told me. Well, I said, you're, you're to blame, not me. He said, I know, yeah. well, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had a lot of experiences. You don't like to hear all this old funny talk, do you? I do. <laughs> um, what about the churches in the area at that time? Uh, well, say, uh, in San Francisco and uh, Oakland. In this area? Yeah, in this area. Well, I, I'll first I'll tell you about here, and then I'll tell you about Oakland. And we had a rather Magruder. Yes, yeah, his she, widow yeah, just she, she passed she, she, away. Just passed away, yeah. And he had that Third Baptist Church, not the Third Baptist, Third Baptist over here on... Uh, Clay, Paul and Clay, Paul and oh, Washington. Yeah. That was the first Baptist. The third, yeah, the first Third Baptist Church yeah. was over there. And 
And then later on, Reverend Brugge opened his church here down on Gary Street, Gary Trim Buchanan and Webster. That was uh, Reverend McGruder. Reverend Brugge's church. I see. Did, was, was it a big, very big church? It wasn't too big. It was a every size church held about 60, 70 people. I see. Had a pretty good fair congregation. There wasn't so many people here then like there is now. Oh, until yes. Until the war. And after the war, they began to come in. Oh, yes. Oh. And that was only two churches that I know, because a lot of these uh, hole in the wall churches in, in a building. Yes. Some of these mm -hmm. uh, grafted preachers, you know, are just. Which one did you attend? None. You didn't go to any. <laughs> no, no, I, I did go down to River and the church every now and then. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And then I went to Third Baptist quite often. I see. But I was no mm -hmm. member of any church. I see. But over in Oakland, they had the old 15th Street Church. You heard of that, haven't you? Oh, yes. Well, that's, yes, where, I, that's where I started. 15th I see. Church. 15th Street. Well, that was the place we'd congregate. Yes. Oh, that's our place to go in Oakland on Sundays. That was a popular church. It was. It still is. I mean, it's right uh -huh. up there on the um, Telegraph. Yeah, Telegraph Street. It's on Telegraph now? It's on Telegraph. It used to it be moved. on... Uh, it was on 15th Street, I guess. On 15th between Market and West. Market and West. 15th, yeah. Yeah, well, it's, it's on uh, Telegraph now. I see. Uh -huh. Did you have any hobbies when you were, uh, well, ha have you had any hobbies? <laughs> no, I used to do a little sketch and a little freelance. This picture here is very nice. Newspapers. Did. Submit your drawings. They'd either take them or send them back, reject, reject them all, but they'd take it. Oh. <laughs> wait about six months before you got any. Do you still do it? Oh, no, I don't do it now. I used to do um, it. Yeah, I think you have quite a talent. Yeah, I got a lot of stuff stored way downstairs in and I've discarded it. I used to have a pastime. Mr. Butler, this letter from the California Historical Society is such an interesting one, I'm just going to read it. Mm -hmm. uh, Dear Al, enclosed are Xerox copies of cards relating to Mr. Butler's grandfather, Alfred J. White. Most of the citations may be found in the two Negro newspapers, the San Francisco Pacific Appeal or the San Francisco Elevator. One citation relates to Delilah L. Beasley's The Negro Trailblazers of California, and another may be found in the 1870 U.S. Census for San Jose. Because Alfred White was a member of the first Negro Civil Rights Convention, in 1855, he should be documented as completely as possible. If Mr. Butler has a photograph of him, it would be a privilege to obtain a copy of it. I enjoyed our meeting with John Hagwood on Monday, after which I found uh, Rumpert Schmidt was a San Francisco sculptor of the 1880s and 1890s. Of course, that latter part mm -hmm. wasn't uh, relating to you, but yeah. it's such an interesting letter. And then to have all of this... Uh, outline of your family. No, 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 they got it. Just about two days. Isn't that marvelous? Let it come. I said, where did they get that? No, Here's see. Alfred White, San Francisco, 1862, pledges with others that he will lobby in Sacramento for rights of testimony, page 54 in uh, Mrs. Beasley's book. All of these different interesting things. How they got this. That's my, that's my mother's side. That's my, my aunt's. This side is your father's side, and this is your no, mother's side. Not my father. No, my father. My father's got nothing to do with that. Oh. Over here, here's my, my this is Alfred J. White's children over here. Oh, so I names, see. Yes, yes. Uh huh. This is wonderful. Well, I'm glad there's some interest. You keep it as long as you want, because I'll. Oh, thank you. Know, you. When, I, when I snatch it away, I'll forget all about it. Thank you. Well, I, I, I appreciate I, this. I'll the stuff I got along. I don't know what I, what I have until I find it. But you do have a very interesting family. And it's so few that can uh, go back like oh, yeah. that and trace it. Well, that's more I could tell you. I wish my sister was living. She could tell you a whole lot more than I. Of course, I oh, got around yeah. more than she did. But remember, she, she knew a whole lot. She I had my grandmother's picture. Yeah. And that's what I, uh, I tried to get from Audrey. 
the yeah. second man. Oh yes. I try to give her, but uh, but she don't. But she done with it. Pretty picture, mostly Indian, you know, but the straight yes. features, you know. Yes. Uh -huh. <coughs> Rushmore, no. Well, there's just uh, there's so many things that of interest. I've talked to Dr. Rickman about the, the early doctors, and uh, of course he told me about Dr. Pennell. That was one of the doctors he mentioned, Dr. Pennell. And, uh, well, um, we've talked about business. Is, it, are, is there anything that comes to your mind about some of the early... Uh, oh, I know Dr. Pennell. We used to be a kid of him called Dr. William Whipper Pennell. Oh. And he got a kick <laughs> out of it. And you know, remember Lee? That was his son. Yeah, in yeah. Washington D.C. Yes. Uh -huh. And uh, he's had a daughter. He has a daughter, uh, Joyce. Yeah, Joyce. Joyce Pennell is in yeah, Joyce Los Angeles now. Uh, Joyce is married to. Uh, I believe he's married to Corrine. That's uh, Doctor Nears' daughter. Corrine. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Uh -huh. this, is, this is granddaughter. That's his Joyce, granddaughter. Yeah, Joyce. A lady, uh, my, my Estelle, do you know my wife, my second wife, Estelle? I don't I think guess I she didn't know her. Well, she's in Los Angeles now, but however, she sent me a clipping. The oldest, the oldest uh, pioneer in Oakland that's living, she, she gave me that clipping, and I don't know what I can tell her, but just a little clipping she found on the paper. 95 years old. Could it be Mrs. Um, oh, <laughs> I saw the tip of my tongue. I know she's been interviewed, I'm quite sure. Uh, I, I kind of read it nonchalant uh, from people saying I... It was in the Tribune? It, it uh, covered all signs, I don't know where she got it from. I just can't call her name, but I, yeah. she's been, I'm quite sure but she I don't know. been interviewed. I, I, I can't recollect the name, I didn't know it. But I, I, I some people say that night, and I, I, had, I had it over that, right in that corner there, and I looked at it, and looked at it kind of nonchalant, and forgot all about it, and I put it down, I can't find it now. She was born on uh, 7th and Pine in Oakland. 7th and Pine. 7th and Pine. I'll tell you, Wilson uh, used to live down there. Victoria Shorey. Now that's an old family in the yeah, area, she, she isn't it? Father was a captain, Captain Shorey. He was a captain. Uh, I believe she, her, she's she, on the list of being. She, she died. Well, she died. Victoria died. Oh. oh. Huh. Yeah, Victoria died. She just died recently. Oh, I didn't Victoria know that. Victoria Shorey, I don't know what her name was. She got married. She had a well, her name is mentioned in the Negro Trailblazers. I, I, in fact, that was one of the names I wanted to look at. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Victoria That's Shorey. Right. Victoria, I don't know what her last name is now. But she's got a little girl. She left a little girl because she's about 15, 16 years old now. Oh. Uh, she had a sister named, she died, older than Victoria. Her name is that's an old family, though. Old family. Yeah, they they mention it in this book. I was uh, going through it the other they're day. They're down on 7th and Gorth. No, they're down on 8th and Gorth. Do you order bless? Open. Oh, Way down by Pine Street. Do you know Pine? Yes. Oh, uh, yes. Little street uh -huh. they're called Do you bless? Between Gorth and Willow on 8th. Yes. I know I, I, I know that area. Yeah. I know, uh, I know that stuff. Yeah. That's where they live. Zenobia Shorey was a sister's name. Zenobia. Oh. Z. Uh -huh. I Z. didn't know Z. her, but I know Ms. I know the name Shorey. Yeah. Well, her her sister's years. name was Zenobia. And the father was a sea captain. Uh, he was a whaler. One of those whale boats. Yeah, a whale. He was a whaler. Yeah, he was bad and hard. You mean he actually tried to uh, catch whales? Yeah, he was a whaler. He was a very successful whaler. He made, he used to ply between here and way up, oh. Nome, way up to Alaska somewhere. 
of the Alex. And that was his job? Huh? That was his job? Sure, he was a captain, Captain Shorey. Oh, isn't that interesting? Tough day, tough day. He had to be a bad guy. About, about, I just said about the Dotson boys. Yes. Oh, this fellow Ed Dotson, he took a trip. Yes. And when they got out the hedge, Shorey took charge with a gun. He didn't fool off those guys at all. Oh, so, he so must have been tough. Yeah, so, so when they got back here, let's say when they got back here to port on one trip, he treated those men so rough and so tough, he had to. Because they, yeah. they could go crazy, I guess, on the hardships that they went through. That Arctic oh, country, you know, must have been hard. all they've seen is ice, ice and sky, that's all they've seen. Oh, yeah. And whales. And uh, in order to get those whales, you had to get on that ice, you know, and uh, some of them had fallen and then pull them out and all that. Tough time. That was hard. Sure, sure, with, with a gun. Made those guys do it. He beat them up, you know, put them in irons. Okay. Uh, I bet they told me, so uh, this fellow Ed Maxson, I mean this uh, George Maxson, he, he was an ex prize fighter. Yeah. And he, they got hot up. They couldn't get a job, and they just want to take this trip up here. To, to hear it, talk about it was going up on a boat with a captain. He thought it's good. But when he got off the heads, he took charge, and they started. They went. But when uh, they got back into San Francisco one trip, this fellow got Shorey on the dock and tried to kick almost killed him with his fist. With his fist. Give, give him a terrific beating. Oh, he just took it all out he on took him. Took it all, all out of him. His yes. enemy had to get it out. Knocked him down. Mm -hmm. Shorey got up and, and pleaded. He get up and put it, let him knock him down again. He put it uh, pretty bad, almost killed him. So you got him off of the ship. Yeah. He, and on the ship, you know, it's a, it's a, go, go, a yeah. horrible thing if you hit the yeah. captain. But well, I should say so. When, when you get them off of the... When, 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 he, when he got out of the heads, out of the heads, you know, out of the Pacific, out of the heads, yes. the, the ocean starts, mm -hmm. that's where he took command. Mm -hmm. Those guys, they couldn't get back, couldn't do nothing. And John, man, that but was it. But kicking whales, this is such an interesting thing. You don't hear of that, a whaler. Whaler. You don't hear of that. Sure. I kind of remember distinctly. He was a heavy set, brown skinned man, muscular built, hardy, yes. pale. Oh. Looked like, looked like Pixaria. Oh. I recollect. Uh -huh. I kind of remember Mr. Shorey. He really made a big fuss over because he was a captain. Oh, I guess so. There weren't many. No. In fact, he's the only one I know but of. He, you know, he could fight, you know, if he was a captain, you know. He, all those other guys, that's upstairs. Uh, upstairs, I see. Uh, he was a captain then, so they. Oh, they have to. Yeah. They've got to respect that yeah. captain of a ship. Yeah, he's one of these guys. He didn't take. He wouldn't take low for nobody. He's probably a good one, though. Well, he was. He, he was had to be a good one. On that whaler, yeah. you know, that's that's, that's hardships. You probably went through torches. I can imagine. See? It takes a certain kind of person to do that. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. It isn't the other uh, way to do it. Max said. Uh, Dobson said that she had to had to get, kill those whales that bring it on the ship, and they had to. Big fries, you know, and they cook that blubber, that oil, that oh, blubber, yes. you know, and get the oil out of there, and they had to put a big barrel, get back with four or five thousand mm -hmm. barrels on this boat. Oh. Whale oil. And, and they say you this, um, there's something that the whale throws up for perfume. I wonder if he ever got near that. Sperm, as they call it? Yes. I don't know. I don't know. For perfume, it's supposed to be a very rare thing I and see. very expensive. Mm -hmm. The most expensive perfumes in the world are but made But that was a, it was a, Four massive schooner, great big uh, sails on it. Yes. Well, that, that's hard work, you know. That's oh. a little sailboat. Oh, my Most goodness. Little yeah. steamboat, sailboat. Oh, those big masts. Yeah, great I big masts. I know what you mean. See? And I'd be, be surprised oh. to see the barrels of oil. Two or three thousand barrels that they bring in on that boat. Okay. Back here in San Francisco. And I'm all on the dock, and I see this fellow out there. He was the Did he have much of a crew working for him? Well, yeah, I guess they had him up to about 25 or 30 men, I guess. And was this uh, uh, colored and white? Uh, yeah, it was all mixed. It was all, all mixed. mixed. But it was all by a big corporation, of course. Yeah. But he was a yeah. head whaler. He, he was a head man, a captain. I guess he was just like a salary. But he made quite a few trips up there. The Arctic. I guess that's all they ever done. Well, I guess that was uh, that was his life's work. When a person is on the sea, they yeah. usually stay on the sea. I think the uh, I think the Putnam's over there up at the little Eleanor Black Cape. Yeah. They made a lot of pictures of them. Up at them, and I know they had pictures of uh, Mr. Captain Shorey. A lot of pictures of the old time. Yeah. Whether she's got them in that collection or not, I don't know. Yeah. But she told me one time to come over and she'd give them to me. They were no good to her. That'd be nice. Yeah. So I'd like to just see them anyway. Yeah. To get them. Memories. Sure. 
Mammy Pleasant very well. Who was who was this at New Mammy Pleasant? Mr. Ritz, my father-in-law, Eugene Ritz. Your father-in-law, yeah. oh. And he used to be the head waiter at the Baldwin Hotel. Yes. Well, Mammy Pleasant, now, did she live in San Francisco? She's right there on the wall. Bush. She did? I didn't. No, Bush and Octavia. Uh, the great big old house there. When we uh, Bush and Octavia. Yeah. Mammy Pleasant, well, she's... She's the one that they wrote this th big book about. The woman was right here that wrote the book. She was right here. She was coming every afternoon for about, oh, about three or four months. Come here and they'd sit here and talk and he'd make a coffee and then sit here and chat. And uh, they knew all about Mammy Pleasant. Don't be afraid of the old guy upstairs. He, he I wonder if it'll uh, affect the... It will. It will. Let me, let's just try it and see if it's... That, that noise has a truck going by. It, it, might, uh, it might come on here. Let's, let's try it. Let's get back to Mammy Pleasant. This, this is very interesting to hear, to talk to someone who's uh, yeah. known, her, really known her. Now, now this lady, uh, I don't know what her name is, but she should have given him a piece of money for all the information that he'd given her. He oh. knew everything about her. All these politicians, oh, yeah. she had control of all these politicians in the city at that time. Yeah. Tell them what to do and they come to her for advice. She oh. either tell them or tell them mind their business and they talk to them just like she was the boss and they know it. Yeah. And uh, she was a very, she's a very uh, stern woman, a very brilliant. Yeah. You never know about her, she's smart. She's kind um, of psychic. Yes. And uh, she was very, uh, well, he, 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 cause he, he used to kind of call her, you know, talk to her. And this, is your, this is your, fa your father-in-law. Father -law. Yeah. About the only place they had to go, so they, they got to like and know one another, so that's the reason he knew so much about her. Oh, I see. I know this woman, uh, I was never home when she was saying she was Roxy. She'd always come in when I, I said once or twice mm -hmm. when she was saying she knew the time I got home. Oh. She'd come between the hours of two and four. And oh. just sit here and talk and uh, tell her this and that. But uh, if I had known what I know now, I'd seen that they got a piece of money from her. But she didn't. She had a lot of money off that book. Oh, but she did. You see, she was a colorful figure in the city. Very, oh, I mean, she, she was. was really... Uh,
Chestnut, one of those pretty chestnut trees over there? Yes. Well, they had this little plot down.